Obsession is a tether. The more you will release, the farther you will go. But what does that word surrender mean? It doesn't mean that you're surrendering to become a prisoner. What it actually means is the reverse. You're surrendering to no longer be a prisoner, a prisoner of the ego. Because that's what it really means to surrender. It's the ego's need to always control every aspect of your life. You know, it's that incessant, pounding desire to control the outcomes of things, to manipulate changes, to govern every area and aspect of what's going on in your life, to be the dominant force, you know, above and beyond all else. That's really what it means. It's surrendering that egocentric, incessant, just driving force to want to just have to be in control. You know, to say that the ego is a control freak is putting it mildly. That's really what, when you hear people say this, surrender, surrender, especially in a spiritual context, it doesn't mean that you're going to become a prisoner. It means you're actually, you are a prisoner now. And now by surrendering, you're allowing yourself to be free. You know, I can't even do enough videos on the damage that has been created by that system to your mind, to your innocence, to your inner child, to the purity that you had when you came here, the naivete, you know, all of that, the way you used to look at life as a child and have those wide eyes and dream like everything's possible, you know, anything's possible, you know, and somehow that just magically just gets wiped away from your face when you, you know, you grow up and you become abused and you become, you know, a victim of torment of others and sarcasm and ridicule and you know you know it already i don't have to tell you we all been through it that's like i say you know uh no one group can claim ownership over the house of pain because pain is a universal language that we all speak that's why everybody has been inside that house of pain that house of pain at least one time in their life or perhaps even more that's why nobody can claim ownership over it because we're all in there man pain is the object lesson of life that allows you to heal you know, and you must be a healer in order to be free. You have to heal yourself. That's the reason, one of the reasons why you're here. But when you hear that term get thrown around, surrender, surrender, it doesn't mean the context of what you believe it to mean in the general sense of you becoming a prisoner now, a hostage, you know, a prisoner of war. It's actually the reverse. You've been a prisoner of war your whole life with the matrix. It's basically like an internment camp. And now you're, you're freeing yourself. You're freeing the soul from the egocentric contrivances to which the need to control every aspect is now dissolved. Because now what you're doing is you're actually placing your faith in something outside yourself, something greater than yourself that created all things. And yes, I am guilty of it too. You know, not so much these days. I catch myself sometimes, but, you know, the last few days have been a monstrous learning curve for me. You know, I find myself sometimes you go to sleep, you know, muttering under your breath, things you regret saying, things of this nature. So nonetheless, you know, you just wise up and rise up and you wake up and you shake up and you say, listen, you know, I can't afford to be doing this. It's just, it's just ridiculous at this point, because trust me when I tell you, man, Life will shake you to wake you. Some people have to be taken to an extreme in order to get their attention. Don't let that be you. Because the universe can wait it out indefinitely. You can't. You're not here forever. So it's best you understand and recognize that there are certain elements that you're supposed to be in control of. Like your faculties, your, your energy, how you conduct yourself. You know, the words you say, how you say them, your actions, and so on. And there's other things that no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you believe, no matter how you've convinced yourself to, uh, you know, to be deceived into believing that you can control these things, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to, you have to surrender to the almighty, you know, and that is a monstrous blow to the ego because that's something it is not prepared to handle. It is not capable of handling it is not made of that type of stuff to deal with something on that level of that magnitude that you actually have to give away your power to something other than yourself. And the ego is not that type of element to do such things because it is a, it is a monstrously petty, any little child 
that if, if it doesn't get its way, it will throw a disastrous temper tantrum, kicking and screaming. You know, I mean, if all you have to do to, to see what I'm saying is that just go to like any of the gyms, the gymnasiums that you see around here. The, the level of ego is unbearable. You know, it's, it's all egocentric. It's all superficial garbage, man. You know, it's all about how good do I look? You know, you have nothing inside to offer anybody. I'm not saying everybody that goes to a gym is like that, but predominantly a lot of them are. All they care about is the outside. That's why they got the muscles showing. And they got skin tight clothes. What you see is what you get. And that's all they have to offer. So that's it. That's the extent of what they have to offer because they have nothing to offer themselves. So therefore, they don't have anything to offer you, but what, what, uh, just nothing beyond the physical. And that's what the ego is all about. It's superficial stuff. There's no substance. It's all image. It's all imagery. It's all optics. That's all it is. Oh, that looks beautiful. Let's go inside. Hey, guess what? There's nothing inside. It's hollow. Hello, hello, hello. You know, like a cave. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there that they have to. There's nothing in there that they have to offer themselves, let alone the universe or society. That's what the ego is. So that's why you have to surrender that that aspect of your low vibrational self by alchemizing these things and bringing it up to par to where you are, developmentally speaking. You know, you can transmute any energy into any other form of energy, and the ego is no exception. You know, you have to learn to surrender, and that will allow you to go to limitless places. It's your refusal to surrender is where your resistance comes from because when you allow the ego to control your reality, it is always going to remain tethered to that matrix that conditioned it. And when you take control of your reality, you are now the governing body and the dominant force in this equation, this relationship between your soul, your mind, and this world in saying that I'm not going to permit this anymore. I'm going to snap this tether and the mind is coming with me, like it or not, and on we go. And the mind will relent. It will be forced to abdicate that throne of lunacy. And the soul takes control and surrenders over to God, saying enough is enough. We've had enough with this crazy child taking control and ruining things the mind. So that's what it will do. It will always revert to a state of dependency, panic, and fear, because that's the only thing that was used to condition it into becoming obedient and subservient. You know, think about it. I already did a video on this. You can't blame yourself, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters. You cannot blame yourself for what they did to you when you were born into this world. You were unconsciously indoctrinated into this illusionary element, this infrastructure that made you an obedient drone. That's why you're so afraid to be yourself and do different things and dress differently. You know, you're afraid to show public and affection. You're afraid to show affection in public and to kiss your, you know, your partner without fear of being ridiculed by others or ostracized or, you know, self-conscious inhibitions just absolutely just contaminate your heart. You know, it's just, it's, it's sick. You get these inferiority complexes because you didn't meet their expectations of what fame is and success and notoriety. It's all a game. And these reptilians know how to play it because they're very good at it. Because from their original source home energy planet, that's all they do. They're barbarians. They're warlords. They're draconian rulers. They have no soul. These are soulless shadow beings that all they do is exist to destroy. That's it. That's it. They're just, you know, they're lifeless. And that's the, um, the creators of the Matrix. And that's why the mind is a byproduct of that, you know, that formula, that plan, that system, that order that compounds down upon it continuously. The more and more heavier things get, the more laden the mind becomes and the slower it resonates and slower it vibrates. It's, it's common sense. The whole object of ascension is to become lighter, streamlined, unencumbered and faster, weightless. But the mind is actually going in the opposite direction the opposite end of the spectrum, you know, the low, heavy, and slow end, extremely low energies, frequencies, and vibrations. That's the mind. And the mind has to realize that it's not going to be given a choice anymore. Now it's going to do 
what it's asked to do. And if not, it will do what it's told to do. And it will follow. And then it will join the soul. And then realize, you know, through the, eleva- through the evolutionary developmental stages of growing like a child from, you know, the age of one to two to three to four, you know, that there's other things other than that system behind it. And it will come to embrace these new ideas and concepts and, and designs and new reality and experiences and new perceptive lenses and everything else. And then the mind will become something else. It will be the mind no more. It will become the very embodiment of a soul once it breaks that third dimensional barrier. But anyway, that's what surrender is. At least to me it is. It is surrendering the need to control the outcome of any given situation that the ego perceives as a possible opportunity to gravitate towards something that is materialistic in nature that can offer it this type of return on its investment for the sole purpose to impress others, meaning it's accolades and awards and trophies, spoils of war. You know, like when invading armies come into a city, the first thing they hit are the banks and the art galleries. and the, You know, it's, it's, that's what Hitler did in World War II. He had hundreds of millions of dollars of stolen paintings and artwork. Spoils of war. That's exactly what the ego is looking to accomplish. They're looking to, to, to gather up. And if it can get you to do these ridiculous things then it, it, it wins by refusing to surrender and controlling the outcome and getting exactly what it wants, how it wants, how it has been envisioned by the egocentric mind. Instead of getting hung up on the descriptions of things, which the ego always does, focus on what the energies will make you feel once you connect with them, once they materialize into your reality. That's the soul. Arrogance is the voice of the ego. Humility is the voice of the soul. Let that be known. Allow that to reverberate in the corridors of your own imagination, brothers and sisters. But it is the truth. So when you hear the word surrender, it's not what you think. You're not giving up anything. You're actually cutting loose what's been holding you back. You know, this this tyrannical, just pit bull that just won't stop grabbing on your leg. You know, you don't want to hurt the animal, but you're like, look, something's got to give. You know, and I'm here all day. So if you don't want to stop, it's going to go my way, whether you like it or not. Because the ego will relent at some point. When you show it that you are a more dominant force and a more prevalent body of energy, because the ego is metaphysical in nature and it can be transmuted, but the initial hands that touched it are maniacal. So that's exactly what it is convoluted with and contaminated with, madness. You know, that's why these reptilians, they prey on your ego. Because the ego is a conduit through which the darkness from an external source funnels its way into your life, into your reality, and floods your imagination with fear and contaminates your mind with orchestrated chaos. You know, so... In conclusion, when you hear the word surrender, it's not what you think in a spiritual context. It's actually the opposite. It's not you becoming a prisoner. It's you now no longer allowing yourself to be a prisoner and moving your way towards freedom again and giving it to God because God knows best. After all, amen.